Have you ever engaged in a serious debate over which is better, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Have you ever played Smash or Pass using only characters from Star Wars and Marvel movies? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we have the podcast for you. Listen to the Steam Gentleman, the podcast where an expert panel convenes to ask the questions about pop culture and social commentary that other podcasts are afraid to ask. Listen to the Steam Gentleman on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, Wrestling Fans International Association is back. That's right, the premier fan club association of the 1970s and 1980s has been revived and is back in business. Join today. It's free at the WFIA.org. That's T H E W F I A.org. You can also join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash WFIA 1969. Welcome back, everybody, once again to Chronicles by Fleisch, the 1998 version. I am your host, Brad Drake, and we are once again recording an episode of Pro 4 World Championship Wrestling. It is February 1998, everybody, and WCW is on fire. Just for a little timeline for all of you, we're just a couple months past Starcade 97, which saw Sting versus Hollywood Hogan, which was the biggest thing outside of 80s wrestling that I had ever seen. This is all anybody talked about for a year was Hogan versus Sting, and Sting challenging Hogan for that World Heavyweight title. Sting, of course, would win the World Heavyweight title, and then I believe they held the title up, and then Hogan got it back, and then Sting got it back. It was kind of a mess. They kind of botched the whole thing. They definitely botched the signing and debut of Bret Hart, no doubt about it. So we started here in January, and we hosted Sold Out, and we made the main event of Sold Out was Hogan and Savage against Luger and Sting. And the stipulation was that if Hogan and Savage won, Hogan would get another title shot against Sting at Super Bowl. So sure enough, at Sold Out, Hogan won. And got is going to get the title shot once again at Super Bowl. So we're having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this WCW save. As I said before, it's taking me back to my teenage years and my super fandom with pro wrestling when I, I really got into it again. Unfortunately, later this year in the summer was when they would do that silly thing and split the NWO. And to me, that's when the wheels started coming off at of WCW and they really ruined things with that Wolfpack and Hollywood split. I never, I didn't like it then. I definitely don't like it now. And that's not going to happen in this save. We have enough talent in this save to do things where we don't have to do that. So stay tuned, everybody. But today we're going to be recording an episode, one more episode of Pro. We may continue more episodes and show the other two recordings of Pro, or we may move back on to ECW and do something else. I'm just not sure yet. I'll have to see how it goes. For those of you that are following my shows for the last couple of years, you'll know that these were always rigid. These shows were always rigid. You always knew what you were going to get when a show debuted. Well, nowadays, you don't know what you're going to get because I'm just having fun with this show now, trying not to make this like a job, and just having fun with you, the fans. So we're going to do what we want, when we want, how we want. How does that sound? Drop a comment below if you think otherwise. I'm going to keep you guessing, everybody. All right, on this episode of Pro, we are going to see Del Apollo against the cruiserweight Mexican star Damien. We're going to see one of those awesome NWO promos. Jim Jameson is action in action against Scott Armstrong. Alex Wright is going to be working that microphone, and then he's going to face Alan Martin. Ernest, the cat Miller is getting some work in here against Dennis Upton. And, of course, he's engaged in a feud with Ray Trailer, and he'll cut a promo with his manager, Sonny Ono. 
Booker T has lost the world television title and is back in tag team action with his older brother, Stevie Ray. And we're going to see Barry Darso and John Nord, two aging veterans here up against Harlem Heat in the main event, everybody. So with that said, let's get to booking. And here we go, Apollo versus Damian. Once again, Pro was like the seashell. And it's a good opportunity to rack up wins for wrestlers that are normally losing. And that's the case here with a lot of the luchadors that were featured on Nitro and then on Thunder. They're doing a lot of losing. So we're going to try to avoid that. All right. Our road agent is going to be Kevin Sullivan. And we're going to switch up referees here. And we're switching over to Randy Anderson. Randy! And he's already on there. We're good to go. All right, up next here, we're going to see that NWO promo. Going to use that old-fashioned language here that everybody liked that I always dug. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Okay. So last one, we had Scott Hall and Vicious and Delicious. So this one, we are going to have Conan... Kurt Hennig and Kevin Nash. All these men are involved in feuds. So Conan is feuding with Rey Mysterio Jr. That's right, everybody. Rey Mysterio Jr., not the WWE crap. All right, Kurt Hennig. Kurt Hennig's in a feud with Ric Flair. Just want to put that one in there. Ric Flair never got his comeuppance when Kurt Hennig turned on him at Fall Brawl in 97. So here we are. Flair's back. If you, They claimed he was injured. He really had plastic surgery done to his face. He came back. He had that short little feud with Bret Hart. They had that excellent match at Sold Out. And then Flair kind of floated around for a while. Well, he's not floating around with us. The guy's excellent. So he's going for revenge here with Kurt Hennig. Our last episode of Nitro, Flair already interfered in a Kurt Hennig match and cost him the match. And uh, up next here, Kevin Nash is in a feud with the Giant, who I always felt was criminally underrated in WCW, and he was at his best. So all three of these men are going to be based on entertainment. This should be a decent promo. We'll see how it goes. All right, that one's all set. Excuse me, everybody. I am suffering from allergies extremely bad this early spring. I mean horribly. My eyes are killing me. My nose is running, especially here at home. Uh, so bear with me if my voice is off a little bit, if my nose sounds a little runny, and that's because it is. All right, Scott Armstrong, everybody, would go on to be finish out his career as a referee with the WWF uh, slash WWE. At this point, he was still putting in in-ring work with WCW. He had a contract. And he was doing a lot of losing. So here's Jim Jameson. Here is Scott Armstrong. Scott Armstrong, of course, is losing matches here in WCW too. However, he gets the chance to get wins on shows like Pro, which was the whole purpose of these shows, was to get these guys work and to get them wins. I used to watch all of these shows. I recorded all of them on VHS. and. I used to watch all of them. I was that into it. And B show, C show or not, I watched them all. And quickly, through those other shows, I was able to learn a lot about what was going on in the modern wrestling at that point. Lee Marshall is going to assist Alex Wright in a promo here. They're both going to be based on entertainment. Kevin Sullivan, of course, is our road agent. This one's booked. All right. Alan Martin, once again, the man with the skullet. He's in there against Alex Wright. A lot of you may not know much about Alex Wright, but Alex Wright, everybody thought, was going to be the next super big thing in pro wrestling. He had size, he was a second generation uh, wrestler, and he was very talented. He never amounted to much here in the States. I think he stayed in Europe and wrestled in Europe and did well for himself. 
But in the States, he never amounted to too much. Um, I always liked him, and I thought he could have been a true talent. They repackaged him as Berlin in like 2000, maybe 99. It was garbage. It was one of those Russo crap things. All right, here is Ernest Miller, and he's doing that talking here with Lee Marshall, who's going to be holding the stick here. Ernest Miller is in a feud with Ray Trailer. Now, we can all say what we want about Ernest Miller in the ring, but he was one entertaining SOB, no doubt about it. I always liked Ernest Miller, and I thought the stuff that came out of his mouth was hilarious. That dancing with Sonny Ono was good stuff. Uh, I liked Ernest Miller, and I'm glad to see him in this game and to get to use him here. All right, so that promo is booked. Everything's up to snuff. Up next, we've got Dennis Upton. He's going to take the fall for Ernest Miller here. We're going to rack up some wins for the cat. The cat needs wins. And once again, I know I've said it several times. I'm just driving it home again. This is what the B shows in TEW are for. They are meant to rack up wins for our wrestlers here. Let me double check. I get excited. My mind moves too quick. Yes, it's Upton versus Ernest Miller. Here is Miller. Yes, we know he has a little injury. Not going to matter in this one. It's a B show. Really, it's a C show. But to us, it's a B show. All right. Ernest Miller with the win there over Upton. Harlem Heat are going to cut that promo here. I understand that Booker T ended up being a good singles wrestler. I know and understand and respect that. No doubt about it. However, Harlem Heat was a really good tag team. And Bischoff was breaking up all these tag teams in WCW. Actually, we weren't even seeing a whole lot of tag matches. The tag belts were in disarray. And I always thought it was too early because I thought Harlem Heat was a really good team. I just want to double check here. We don't see them in any feuds, so that's okay. So we'll keep this one how it is there. Uh, i got to make sure that Sullivan is our agent, and he is. All right, and here comes our main event here. 14 minutes, I think it is. Yes. And Darso and Nord are going to get some work in here against Harlem Heat. Darso and Nord, despite their ages, were still capable at this point. Very capable. We're going to have big Stevie Ray get the win here for Harlem Heat. And I got to tell you, Harlem Heat was one of my favorite tag teams, especially when I first got back into wrestling. Two big guys, athletic guys, looked like a million dollars. They were a great team. They were broken up way too prematurely. Of course, uh, Stevie Ray would go on to form that stupid Harlem Heat 2000 with Tony Norris, the former, uh, oh, Ahmed Johnson in WWF. The guy was terrible. And then he would join... NWO Hollywood, which was kind of cool, but again, why break up such a good team? All right, this one is booked. We're at 56 minutes. We're going to go ahead and give her a rip here, everybody, and see how we do. All right, Damien gets a win with the Martinette, whatever the heck that is. We get a whopping 19, lots of red text to doom here, and that's all right. That's why it's a B show. We get a nice promo here for the NWO, and they get a 73 here. Good stuff. Up next here, Jim Jameson and Scotty Armstrong. They get a whopping 21. Scotty with a 40 here. Red text of doom in the bottom. Up next, Alex Wright promo with Lee Marshall. Gets a whopping 42. I'll take it. Alex Wright's a young guy. He's only about 22 years old here, coming along. Alex Wright beats Alan Martin. Alex Wright only scores a 36 here. Whopping 27. But that's all right. Wright wins with that German suplex. Bridging German suplex. Here we go. Lee Marshall and Ernest Miller give us a promo here. 45. Lots of green. Green equals money. A little bit of red text to doom. We'll have to look into that problem. A 25 and a 20 gets us an 11. Oh, 
That's some serious red text to doom there. An 11. Ouch. Up next, the Harlem Heat promo. And it gets a whopping 46. So, again, not terrible. And our main event gets us 59. I'll take it. That's not terrible for this type of show. And uh, Harlem Heat gets to win with that tower, towering Inferno. I forget exactly what that finisher was, but I remember enjoying their finisher for what that's worth. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this one. We'll see you back in action. I'm not sure what we're going to be back in action with next. Just going to have to tune in and find out, everybody. For those of you that are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and drop us a message below. Let us know how you found the channel, what you think of it so far. For those of you looking for more, you can find it over on Patreon, patreon.com slash powercast network. For just $5, you can get access to all of our shows early and ad-free. You can get access to all of our spreadsheets. You get full access to the latest version of the 1987 Supermod and so much more. Everybody, check it out today. Check us out on social media, facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. And don't forget, get your free membership to Wrestling Fans International Association today, everybody, by heading over to the WFIA.org. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time.